It's important to understand the flow of manufacturing costs in a job order cost system, and that's what we're going to do during this video. You know that manufacturing costs are made up of direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. Direct materials are the physical materials and supplies which can be directly traced to the production of a product. There may also be indirect materials, materials and supplies that either cannot be directly traced or whose value is so small that it's not worth tracing directly. Indirect materials are part of the third category of manufacturing costs, called manufacturing overhead. Direct labor is the second category, made up of the cost of labor which can be directly traced to the production of the product. Similar to indirect materials, indirect labor either cannot be traced directly to the product or the cost is too small and therefore not worth tracing. Indirect labor is also part of manufacturing overhead, the third category of manufacturing costs. That third category of manufacturing costs is called manufacturing overhead. It's made up of all the manufacturing costs which are indirectly associated with producing products. This would include costs such as indirect material, indirect labor, depreciation on the factory building and equipment, insurance on the factory, property taxes incurred on the factory, cost of maintaining the factory facilities, and any other indirect costs which are caused by the manufacturing process but are not directly traceable. It's important to not only understand the manufacturing costs, but also understand how they flow through the organization and the organization's accounting records in a job order costing system. The best way to understand this is to use a step-by-step -step example. Camilla Inc. is a manufacturer producing custom boxed cakes, which they sell to upscale grocery stores. At the start of the year, Camilla purchased $82,000 of raw materials on account. To simplify the concepts I'm going to demonstrate, let's assume that Camilla is a new company and therefore there are no opening balances in any of their accounts. The entry to record the purchase of raw material would be to debit raw material inventory and credit accounts payable for $82,000. We would then have to record this purchase in the T accounts. We would do that by debiting raw materials inventory for $82,000. Note that I would also record this in the company's accounts payable T account, but I'm going to focus on the flow of manufacturing costs and therefore we're going to ignore any accounts which are not directly connected to manufacturing. Camilla Inc. began manufacturing their custom cakes and requisitioned $78,000 of raw material to use in the manufacturing process. What does this mean? It means that these raw materials are removed from inventory to use in the manufacturing of cakes. Of the $78,000 used in the production process, $5,000 is determined to be indirect and therefore is recorded as manufacturing overhead. The remaining $73,000 was determined to be direct materials and recorded into the work in process inventory. Exactly what is work in process inventory? This account, sometimes called work in progress inventory or WIP for short, is the total cost of all unfinished products, products which are currently moving through the manufacturing process. It's accounted for as a current asset account on the balance sheet. This is where the company accumulates all of the manufacturing costs for products which are currently being manufactured. Recording the requisition of raw materials, we would debit work in process inventory for the direct materials of $73,000. Remember that these costs are directly traceable to the product. The indirect materials would be debited to the account called manufacturing overhead. This account, which may also be called factory overhead, manufacturing overhead control, work overhead, or factory burden, is where we accumulate the total cost of operating the factory, which cannot be traced directly to the product. To finish this entry, we would credit raw materials inventory for the total amount of raw materials transferred into production, $78,000. In the T accounts, we need to enter a credit to raw materials inventory of $78,000 and then show that these costs have been moved to manufacturing overhead, 
debit of $5,000, and work in process inventory, debit of $73,000. If there are no other entries to the raw material inventory account, this would result in an ending balance of $4,000 in raw material inventory. That's the amount of raw material that the company has left to use in future production. Camilla's workers have earned a total of $122,000. The company has paid them $110,000 to date, but owes them the remaining $12,000, which they will pay next month. We would record this entry as factory labor. This is a temporary holding account which we use to track factory labor until we can determine how much is direct and how much is indirect. The entry is therefore a debit to factory labor for $122,000, a credit to cash for $110,000, the amount actually paid, and a credit to wages payable, sometimes also called payroll liabilities, of $12,000. Again, we are only tracking the T accounts for those accounts which are part of manufacturing costs. Therefore, we would enter a debit to factory labor of $122,000, our temporary holding account. Camilla's payroll department now determines that $119,000 of the labor costs relate to the salary of assembly line workers, those workers who work directly in the production of the custom cakes. The remaining $3,000 of the total labor costs relate to labor which cannot be directly traced to the product and therefore is recorded as manufacturing overhead. To record this transaction, we would debit work in process inventory for the direct labor of $119,000, debit manufacturing overhead for the indirect labor of $3,000, and finally credit factory labor for the full $122,000. Flowing this through the T accounts, we debit work in process for $119,000, debit manufacturing overhead for $3,000, and credit factory labor for the full $122,000. Note that the balance in the factory labor account is now zero. That's because factory labor is simply a holding account used until we can determine the division of the direct and indirect labor. Camilla incurs the following costs utilities of $18,000, factory insurance of $14,000, depreciation on the factory building and equipment of $35,000, supervisor salary $11,000, and property taxes on the factory of $13,000. All of these costs relate to overhead because they are indirect. Part of the production process but not directly traceable to the product. How are they recorded in the accounting system? First, we would debit manufacturing overhead for the total of $91,000. Then, we need to credit the following. Utility payables, $18,000. Prepaid insurance, $14,000. Accumulated depreciation, $35,000. Wages payable, $11,000. And property taxes payable of $13,000. Note what we have not used. Expense accounts. When students record this entry, they often charge all of these amounts to expense accounts, but these are indirect costs which are inventoriable, meaning they are product costs which must be reflected eventually in the finished goods inventory on the balance sheet. That's why they're placed in the manufacturing overhead holding account until they are used in production. Note that manufacturing overhead is a temporary asset account on the balance sheet which by the end of the year will equal zero. Note also that had we paid these amounts in cash, our entry would have reflected cash instead of the payable accounts we did use. Be sure to read the information in the question carefully so you know which it should be, payable or cash. You should also note that even when we do pay cash, the prepaid insurance and accumulated depreciation is always used. Going back to our original entry with the use of payables, we now need to flow this entry through the T accounts. Again, we're only tracking our manufacturing accounts. Therefore, the only update we have to do is a debit of $91,000 to manufacturing overhead. Note that we now have $99,000 in our manufacturing overhead account. These costs are, of course, all indirect.
remember we were able to charge the actual direct material and the actual direct labor to the work in process account because those costs were directly traced to production. However, manufacturing overhead relates to the whole production process, not to any specific job. Since we can't trace these costs directly to any particular job, we have to assign manufacturing overhead to jobs using an estimate. To do this, we have to calculate and use a predetermined overhead rate, which is the topic of our next video. Thanks so much for watching.